Welcome to Hope City Church. I'm so happy to see so many new faces today. That makes me so happy. Amen. Uh, Bronte, thanks for bringing all your friends and family. You're being a leader. I like I like seeing leadership. Uh, that's cool. Uh, if you have your Bibles, well, the title of my message today is I Surrender. Help me. I was taking the church through the book of Corinthians, but I felt like this summer I want to pause and just pray and seek God's face on what he wants me to preach on. And so this is the topic that came to heart is I surrender. So if you have your Bibles, go to Luke chapter 22, verse 39. Luke chapter 22, verse 39. If you're there, say amen. If you're not there, say help me, Jesus. I need Jesus to help me. I gotta find it too. Okay. Okay. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. All right, we read. Jesus went as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. God, help us not to fall into temptation. Thank you for this message that you have given me. I pray that we could put your word into practice. In your holy name we ask, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The question I have for everybody, including myself, will you surrender to God or surrender to temptation? Every day we have that choice. Am I going to surrender to God or surrender to temptation? What kind of temptations were the disciples facing that night? One, they were tired. They wanted to sleep. The other temptation, they were tempted to quit. They were sad. They were, they were crying because they found out their best friend was about to leave. And another temptation that one of the disciples had was the temptation to be angry. Uh, you ever get tempted to be angry, to get upset? What if Peter was praying, God, help me with my anger. Help me not to give in to that temptation. Maybe he would have pulled out the sword that night and chopped off someone's ear. Mm. Another disciple had another temptation that he was vulnerable with. And that was the temptation to be greedy. His name was Judas. And he, he sold Jesus out. He sold, sold him out for like not even that much money. Or maybe it was a lot of money. It doesn't matter. Have you ever been stabbed in the back by a friend? Oh, it hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. Temptation was... was uh, The disciples were going to face temptation. We don't know all the temptations they faced, but what we, what we do know is all of us face temptation. I used to face a lot of temptation. I still do. I remember growing up, it actually wasn't a temptation for me. I, it's something I love to do. I used to like to go out to the clubs and party. I, before I became a pastor in the 90s, you see Pastor Jose with his baggy jeans out in the clubs. Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. Party. Drinking. And if I got some numbers that night, don't get jealous, Sherry. It was a good night. <laughs> I remember one night I was at the Mazda line. It was in South Sac. There's no clubs here in in Natoma, as far as I know, all the clubs were in South Sac or downtown. So I went to South Sac to this club called the Mazalon. <laughs> you know, it end, the clubs end up, they end at 10, or no, it's two, 2 in the morning, the club ends. 
And so the club ended, it's time to go home. I'm driving home, and what do you know? The police are after me. Uh-oh. And um, I don't know what I did wrong, but there's like four or five cops following me, and then the, the, the ghetto bird's all over, it's over my police, the police, the ghetto bird, you know, the, the helicopter cop, is shining his light on my vehicle. I'm like, oh no, what did I do? And I wasn't drinking and driving. I was usually the designated driver. Sometimes I would drink, but that night I was the designated driver. Thank God. And so the police want to, they're like, get out of your car which, and with your hands up, turn off your vehicle. So how do you turn off your vehicle and keep your hands up at the same time? I don't know. So I'm doing my best because I don't want to get shot. Now, bear in mind, there's five cops all around me, a uh, helicopter cop shining their light. I barely can see. And so I need to somehow turn off my engine, keep my hands up. And now they tell me to open up the door with my hands up. I'm like, okay, how do you do this? And I'm scared. They're, they're pointing their guns at me. All I could do is surrender. I, I don't want to get killed. And so I'm like, okay, so I, I throw my, my keys outside the door. And then I open up the door. And then they said, okay, with your hands up, walk backwards. I'm like, I, I barely can see. I'm, I'm blinded by the light. Uh, and I'm walking backwards. And all I can do is surrender. Because if I don't, I'm dead. And so they throw me in the cop car. You know, I, I was like, what did I do? I'm like, I'm scared. Like, what did I do? And they, they, get, I, they take my license. They, they run my plates. They come back 10 minutes later like, oh, sorry, a, a, a car that matched your vehicle uh, did a drive-by shooting just down the street. It, you're free to go. Wow. Have you ever been mistreated by people in authority? Yes. Have you been mistreated by people, hurt by people? Yes. Jesus could feel your pain. He's been hurt by people. He's been mistreated by people in authority. He went through a lot of suffering. We read that Jesus surrendered his life to God in prayer. And that's what was going on during this time. He's like, God, this is very painful. What I got to go through, I got go to go to the cross for the world's sins. I don't want to do this. But this is what has to happen. So let it be. We read that in Luke twenty two forty one, he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed. See, so my kids, they, they love baseball, and they can throw the baseball pretty far. But how far can a, a stone be thrown? Because a, a, a baseball could be, you know, it can roll, it can keep going. But a stone, you got a stone, and you throw a stone, it probably go pretty far. But it's going to stop eventually and come back. I guess if it hits something, it'll come back. <laughs> but it's a figure of speech. Jesus is a stone's throw away. The disciples can see him from a distance praying. He's in anguish. And he's telling them, hey, pray that you don't fall into temptation. But what do they do? <sighs> they fall asleep. And Jesus is praying for you. He's praying for me. He's praying... To God, like, God, help me to get through this hour. Help me to bear this cup. It, it was just too difficult. And it was, the cup represented the wrath of God. He had to take upon the, the wrath of God. God, like the sins of the world were upon his shoulder. The Bible says that he died on the cross for our, our sins. And when he was on the cross, he took your sins. Whatever sin you committed was upon him. Whatever sin I've committed was upon him. It was a, a sin cup. The cup of suffering. I don't know what type of cup you had to carry in life. We've all had to go through pain and suffering, right? We've all had to carry people's burdens, right? And this is what Jesus had to do for us. He had to carry the cup of sin and death. But he did it out of love for you and for me. He didn't have to do it. He chose to do it. We read in Matthew 6, 6, 
When you pray, enter your closet. When you shut the door, pray to your Father which is in secret, and your Father which sees you in secret, he will reward you. So Jesus practiced what he preached. Now he's like spending time alone with God. Yes, it's good to pray together at church, but we also have got to find alone time with God. Where's your secret place where, where you go alone to be with the Father? We, we all need a, that alone time with the Father when we're going through it. Because how many of you know that we all go through it sometimes? We all go through pain. We all go through times of suffering. We all have to bear people's burdens. And Jesus had to bear the burdens of the world, the sins of the world. See, your relationship with God cannot just be a Sunday experience. we got to experience God throughout the week. You never read in the Bible that Jesus only prayed on Sundays or he only prayed during the Sabbath. He prayed throughout the week. He spent time with God throughout the week. And so he had a strong relationship with God. So he was able to, to take on the cross. He was able to take on the world's sins because he had that power that came from above. Is anybody hearing me? Amen. Yeah. And so Jesus is saying, hey, if you don't want to fall into temptation, hear me. If you don't want to fall into temptation, you got to spend time with God. Can you hear me? Yeah. Because Genesis 4, 7 says, sin is crouching at your door. It desires you, but you must master it. Has anybody here mastered sin? I haven't. But if you get close to God, you're going to have more... Strength next time temptation comes your way to say no to it. But if you don't spend time with God, you're going to be more vulnerable to temptation. When I was going out to the clubs, partying all the time, I was not spending a lot of time with God. I was so vulnerable to temptation. And when you don't spend time in prayer, when you don't spend time reading your word, you're, when temptation comes your way, watch out. And this is what Jesus is saying. Watch out. Pray that you don't fall into temptation. We read in Luke twenty two forty two. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. What kind of cup has God called you to bear? One Bible scholar says this. When Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. He surrendered his own will to God's will. Have you done that yet? Have you surrendered your will to God's will? It's hard. If you really want to follow God, there's no other way. You have to surrender your will to God's will. I had to give up the club life. And that was hard. It really was hard because that was my lifestyle. I used to go out to the clubs all the time. From 15 all the way to 22, you see, see me at the dance club every weekend. I don't even know why my mom let me go out when I was 15. You talk to her after the service. But I was out at the club at the age of 15 with a fake ID getting in. But that was the temptation I had to face growing up. And finally, when I started getting close to Jesus, I had to surrender my life to God and do things His way. I had to stop listening to the music at the clubs. I remember the last time I went to the dance club, one of the last times I went out to the dance club, it was a Sunday night. I know, I shouldn't be partying on a Sunday night. It was at a club in Old Sacramento. And I, it was dead that night. I wonder why. People have to work the next day. And I'm at the club, and I, they're playing some nasty music, and there's a girl and a guy in the middle of the dance floor. They're bumping and grinding, dance, dancing all nasty. And then I remember the, God, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Jose, can Jesus dance to this music? <laughs> and that was the moment I realized I can't be going out here no more. I need to give up this, this lifestyle. But slowly but surely I stopped going out to the clubs. And then when I met my wife, she was still going out to the clubs. She was. And I was like, hey, hey baby, that's cool. You still want to go out to the clubs? But I'm not into that no more. And, and I give her an ultimatum. I say, you want to go out to the clubs, but you just can't date no more. And she's like, oh, I'm done with that lifestyle too. And, and we eventually got engaged and got married. But we, we have a similar story. My wife used to be clubbing too. 
So, what's your temptation? We all have temptations. Let's keep it real. You are tempted with something. Maybe you're not tempted to go out to the nightclubs and party. What's your temptation? And how are you going to overcome that temptation? I'll tell you how you can overcome that temptation through the power of God, through prayer. Amen? Amen. We read in Luke twenty-two forty-three, 43, and the angel from heaven appeared to him to strengthen him. Even Jesus, when he's on the ground suffering and crying, he just needed help. And God sent a friendly angel his way to strengthen him. The word angel means messenger, helper. God's called you to be a helper. God's called you to be a messenger. God's called you to help somebody. Because we all know people that are dying without Jesus. We all know people that are all locked up. We know people that are on drugs. We know people that have done some things. I was just thinking about it last night uh, about a friend of mine. His name is Johnny Fight. Died of a fentanyl overdose. A young girl named Summer. Same thing. Died of a fentanyl overdose. And they all knew Jesus at one point in their lives, but they turned away from God. It's easy to say a quick prayer, Jesus come into my life, be my savior. It's harder to follow him for the rest of your life. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to surrender your life to God? Is anybody hearing me? Yes. yes. This is what Jesus did. He surrendered his life to God. And I know that's what you want to do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. And that's what I want to do. I want to surrender my life to God. And I did that at the age of 22. My life hasn't been the same. Give God glory. Amen. We read in Matthew 27, 32, if you could go there. As they were coming out, they found a man named Serene, named Simon, whom, who, whom they compelled, or the Roman soldiers compelled, to carry his cross. Perhaps this is an answer to prayer. Jesus is suffering, carrying this cross. It gets too heavy for him. And along comes Simon to help carry his Jesus' cross. Would you help me carry my cross? I'll do the best I can to help carry your cross. We're all called to carry each other's burdens. We're not called to follow Jesus alone. We're all called to follow Jesus the best we can together. But sometimes it's lonely following Jesus. Sometimes it feels like I'm the only one following him today. Doesn't it sometimes it feel like you're the only one following Jesus? We don't believe that lie. We're all following Jesus together. You're not alone. And when you're going through it and you're, you're down and out, maybe God's going to send someone to help you up. Maybe God's going to send you an angel to help lift you up. A friend to encourage you. Is anybody hearing me today? Yes. See, the thing that Jesus dreaded most finally came upon him, the cross. The pain and suffering. The cup that he was, he was praying about. But did he quit? No. No, he went all the way to the top of the mountain to die for your sins. Church, don't quit. It's easy to quit. But we're not quitters. We're going to continue to follow Jesus even if we have to carry our cross. Even if we have to face persecution like the disciples finally once. Finally, the disciples had to face the cross themselves. Luke twenty two forty four, 44. We can go there. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Have you ever prayed so hard that you started to sweat blood? Anybody? I don't think anybody's ever done that. Have you ever prayed so hard that you started to sweat? Perspire? Have you ever prayed to start to cry? See, Jesus is like praying so hard... He starts to sweat. And the, the gospel writer says that it looked like blood coming down his forehead. It was coming down nonstop. I don't know if it's hot that day or he was just praying very hard. He was praying for you. He was interceding for you and for me. Just think about that. He was wrestling in prayer for his people. We need to do the same thing. We got to wrestle in prayer for the people that we love. God saved my brother. God saved my cousin. God saved my classmate. God saved my neighborhood. God saved this nation. God saved this world. 
When was the last time you went to God in prayer and you start just going at it, just wrestling with God in prayer? This is what Jesus is doing. He's, he's praying to God and he's starting to sweat. Luke 22, 45. When he rose from prayer, he went back to the disciples. He found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up, pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. I have a problem with this verse. Nobody just falls into temptation. Whoop. You don't just fall into temptation. No one falls into temptation. It's a choice. You enter into temptation. I didn't just fall into the club. No, I chose to go out to the nightclub. Nobody choose, Nobody falls into temptation. It's a choice. So a better translation is this. Pray that you will not enter into temptation. Are you, are you saying that type of prayer? God, help me not to enter into temptation. It's all around us. When you leave church today, trust me, you're going to see temptation come your way. If not tomorrow, you're going to face temptation. That's why we got to pray and ask God to help us not to enter into it when it comes our way. We read in Matthew 16, 14, if we go there, if I get the worship team back here. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciples must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. In other words, Jesus is telling his disciples, you've got to keep me first. You've got to deny yourself. You've got to surrender your life to me if you really want to follow me. No more half-stepping. If you really want to follow me, deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. Surrender it all. Surrender your family. Surrender your finances. Surrender your future. Surrender your health. Surrender your worries. Surrender those temptations. What are you willing to surrender in order to follow Jesus? Jesus practiced what he preached. He surrendered the cross. I mean, he surrendered a crown for the cross. He was the king of glory, the king of kings. And he says, I'll surrender this crown and I'll take up the cross. What are you willing to surrender to follow Jesus? Could you stand while I pray for you? We're going to close with a, a final song that's called I Surrender All. If you're at war and, and you want to give up the battle, you throw up the white flag. That means I surrender. I give up. I quit. I think some of us here need to surrender to God. I quit. I'm done doing things my way, God. I surrender my life to you. I surrender everything I got my talents, my gifts, my family, my future my pain, are you willing to surrender it all to Jesus? If you're willing to surrender your life to God, I got a white flag for you. I want you to come forward while this song is being played. Take this home and remember that you have made the choice to surrender your life to Jesus.